Hi folks, welcome to my Ipit Retro Journal. Um, today I'm going to be talking about this machine. Um, you can see, uh, well the cover, uh, if you can see it actually has a uh, brother written upside down. So let me open that up for you. And it is a, uh, it is a, um, so if you look in the uh, inside here, it's got some cartridges, it's got uh, some paper, um, and then this is the main beast. Um, so this is a Brother EP uh, electronic, uh, it's an electronic typewriter. Uh, came out in 1983, and uh, so my history with this is kind of cool. Um, I had uh, uh, when I went to college. Um, freshman year, even though I was going to be a computer science major, uh, they did not allow freshmen to take computer courses, so you didn't actually have an account in their computer room to get on their, uh, uh, it wasn't mainframes, there were many, many frames, they were smaller, I mean, they were, you know, they, they were machines that were sitting in some server room that you would have an account and access to in a, in a computer room that was just a bunch of, I think, amber screen terminals, um, and uh, they had you know, dot matrix printers where you could print out your, your, your code and stuff, and you could also print out uh, written assignments if you needed to uh, on, on, you know, 8 by 11 inch perforated paper that you had to take the ends off. And um, so what we as freshmen had to do in college is when we took our English 101 classes, uh, we actually had to go to the library and use our typewriters because the professors wanted us to hand in typewritten um, uh, assignments when we had to write our essays and papers and whatnot for at least for the English class, I mean, for all the classes, but especially for the English class. And so the, I remember the professors telling us, well, go to the library. They had a bunch of typewriters there you could use. So this was, again, kind of a weird time uh, before we became computer, uh, ubiquitous computing in, in everywhere in colleges. Um, then after Christmas, my roommate freshman year uh, got uh, got this. I don't think it was new to him, um, but uh, maybe it was a hand-me-down. But what was cool is that you could actually then um, use this to uh, to you know type your papers up. And it's cool because it has. Um, first of all, it's um, I'm not going to lift it up because it's 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 actually not that light. But it has. Um, you can see it kind of right here. There's sort of a uh, underneath here. You can put I think. Um, four uh, D size batteries in here so that it can be actually be portable. Now I don't know how long they last but it, if you're not printing and you're just typing um, and this does have the opportunity to store uh, some stuff in memory it probably can last a pretty long time but if you're typing uh, who knows how long it lasts. Um, but uh, so this has um, if you take a look at it It's got a roller you can put paper in there and it's got a, a, a printer cartridge um, it's got a little LCD display it's got these uh, weird push-button switches um, and uh, um, but yeah so this was basically a typewriter but it had some advanced features one of those advanced features was that um, you could um, so there are different modes that you could put it in, which are right here. You could put it in normal mode, which would actually, um, what you type is what you saw. You could put it in um, store mode, and store mode basically allowed you to store up to uh, 2,000 characters. So that was its memory, uh, in memory to, um, uh, you know, print later. Um, now, of course, it would be pretty difficult to do that um, because you only get a 16 character display. Um, so one thing you could do is in normal mode, I think you could actually save what you've typed. So in other words, you could see what you're typing as you're putting in a sheet of paper and type it. You could store that um, and then uh, print it out later. So you could basically create templates if you wanted to. Um, uh, 
but basically the way it worked in normal mode is that you would type 16 and the 16 characters you typed would appear here and when you type the 17th character then it would print the first character so you had sort of a 16 character buffer to allow um uh for uh editing and, and modifying other th other than that it was pretty much like a basic uh typewriter having a left margin uh tab set tab clear um right margin um many of the things that a, a modern um um typewriter at that point had uh the, the one cool thing about this is that these cartridges um and i have an example um here uh let's see if you can see that so um it yeah it prints it out uh on the uh yeah, this is a normal sheet of paper, and it prints uh, uh, what it's um, what you're typing on the sheet. It has only a single font. Like I said, the font. Can I grow this a little bit? Yeah, font's not bad. Um, it's it's a dot matrix printer, um, and I actually to to save on the cartridges, you can see there's a little bit of uh, weakness with the O, because I actually uh, rewound the cartridge, and so it it typed over old characters. The way that cartridges work um, is kind of interesting. Yeah. There we go. The way that the cartridges work is that it's actually not a normal ink cartridge. It actually melts. It's sort of a, a wax, black, waxy substance. And uh, the printer actually melts that uh, pixel by pixel onto the sheet of paper. Um, and in fact, you can also use, so this was what it came with, and this actually talks about uh, thermal paper. So this is actually a thermal printer. It's a dot matrix thermal printer. And what's interesting about that is that um, uh, it, what it does is it basically heats up an element and with the ink cartridge, it actually, um, let me put this back in so you can actually see the picture. Oops, it's too dark. So trying to find the right uh, is always a little tricky. That's a good place. Um, so, uh, so basically what it does in these cartridges, and if I can pull this one out, is that even though there is ink on here, see if I can't zoom in on that, uh, it's 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 waxy ink that gets melted off so like the original typewriters that had these uh, one-time ink ribbons where as the uh elements strike struck it it actually would transfer the ink to the paper this kind of does the same thing but it, instead of using uh, physical force it uses heat and it actually will melt the wax off of this um onto the uh Let's see, let's get a good, good uh, trying to find the right, there we go. Um, and so it would actually melt the wax off uh, of the ribbon onto the paper in, in a very similar way to how laser printers nowadays work. So a laser printer actually uh, melts little bits of plastic that's a fine powder uh, onto the paper. Uh, and so in the same way, this uh, kind of is the same thing. So this will not uh, rub off and, and, and water will not make it sort of smear. So it's, in some ways, it's, it's like um, similar to a laser printer, except that it does it one, um, one pixel at a time, whereas a laser printer will literally uh, agitate an entire line uh, of what the image should be and, and then... Um, and then melt that on there and so it does it continuously and that's why you get really high resolution on laser printers um this however um doesn't do that uh it doesn't it doesn't it has a little uh i don't know what is eight by nine uh um a print head that heats it up so what's cool about this is it, it can use these it can use these um these uh ink cartridges but it can also use uh Thermal, thermal, thermal print, printing paper, right? So I actually have some in here. I actually bought um, a roll of um, 
uh, thermal printer paper that uh, I hopefully am able to use on this printer. Um, so uh, the idea is uh, that this is uh, stuff to use on fax machines and they still sell them. You can get it for a pretty good price and uh, that should be able to feed into that. Um, and it uses just a, a friction feed, so it doesn't do anything. Um, okay, I was trying to find, there we go. It doesn't do anything uh, super special about that. But uh, before I go into um, uh, doing that, um, using this, I just wanted to sort of go over kind of what this printer does. Now, my, my eventual goal is to actually hook it to the QL uh, because one of the cool things that the EP22 has, which is different from the EP20, which is the 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 the, the model that came out just previous to that, it might have come out in the same year, it was a little less expensive, was that the EP20 uh, 22 adds a printer port, adds a serial port, and allows you to actually uh, set this as a printer, and you can use it as a printer. Now, um, you know. Having printers on your computers is sort of a rite of passage. I know with my ZX81, when I first got it, one of the first things I did is I bought a uh, the ZX printer back in the day. And of course, with my TRS-80 um, uh, computer, I have a printer with that. Uh, on the QL, when I first bought the QL back in the late 80s, early 90s, soon thereafter, I bought um, a brother, I believe it was an M1109 that matrix printer, which uh, was made by brother, but was Epson compatible, and I was able to hook that to my QL and be able to print things out. What I have on my QL right now, um, just to show you, is uh, uh, the, the, I was going to show you the word processor on that. Um, so as I start that up, and I was able to uh, use that word processor and and write, and then actually print out on the QL. That little brother M1109 was pretty neat because when I then moved on from my QL to the Mac 2SI. The Epson compatibility was, was, was pretty cool back in the day. And then, of course, eventually I got rid of the um, brother because I got a laser printer for the Mac. And, and the funny thing is, when I think about my Mac 2SI, I really don't think of it as a retro computer. I know there's lots of people that do uh, 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 stuff on, on the old Macs. But because it had a laser printer, and I think uh, I upgraded it with as much memory as I could, and I had it to the early 2000s, I kind of think of that as my first modern computer. I think it had at least 256 colors, if not 20, uh, 24 uh, bit color, because uh, I had a pretty good graphics card in there. Uh, and then with a laser printer, I, I, was bas I can basically do all the same things now I can do with my current uh, you know, Windows 7 computer and, and, and behind it, which you can't... Uh, uh, so I suppose if I were to uh, move this camera slightly, behind this computer there is actually a wireless laser printer, which is a, a Samsung, pretty small, pretty easy to uh, um, use. And so I sort of have um, uh, always had uh, a laser printer uh, with my computer, and there isn't to me that much difference from running a Mac 2 SI uh, and printing and using Word. The version of Word I have on my um, current Windows computer is, is compatible with everything that I run. So if we were to look at it, um, I did it in about. Uh, it's, yeah, it's 2003 Professional Edition. I actually own it. And uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I can write and save. I think I have an, an extension pack where I can save docx format which is kind of the, the latest and greatest in any case um so uh um so i actually so this was not the the printer the typewriter that i used in college i i think in early 2000 i think i got this off of ebay um and then uh because i remember using it in college and then uh, at one point i sold my mac to asaya the laser printer went with it and and for a while i didn't have a printer and and I think 2005, I needed to, uh, I was a, uh, job hunting and I needed to print out uh, um, cover letters. And I think I hooked this up to my ThinkPad, uh, IBM ThinkPad. We were running Windows 98 and it actually did a really nice job. Um, it has a limited character set. So there is a, a so by the way, the, um, just to show, um, so there is the, this is the instruction booklet. And it tells you all the things it can do. It actually has a built-in calculator, which is kind of funny. I would use it as a calculator. 
But um, you know, the cool thing with this model is, as I said, you can store up to two thousand characters of memory, um, and uh, it just shows you the character set that it has. Um, and something just fell out of it, which is the um, oh, it's the registration packet. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to be ordering anything from that. But um, but yeah, so this has. Uh, a lot of features, and it's interesting. It came out sort of half a year before the QR came out, and it's 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 pretty um, it's pretty cool what all the things it can do, um, you know, considering how old it is. And uh, there's a, I'll put a link in my in this video. There's a YouTuber that actually uh, had an EP20 and did, and did a um, a full take on it. And this YouTuber does uh, typewriters, so that's their specialty. And he actually took the EP20 apart. I'm not going to take this one apart because it's currently working, but he kind of showed how how difficult it is to take it apart. But so this this uh, particular model can uh, uh, there's a difference between the EP20 and the EP22 uh, is that the um, the EP22 has the additional feature of besides being able to store things in memory to up to 2,000 bytes. It has this uh, serial port that you can connect, and then it has this little booklet that shows you all the different ways you can connect it to an Atari 400, 800. And I love the the connection. It's just <laughs> you basically uh, you have the transmit line, the ground, and DTR. That's it. So <laughs> three lines. So it's going to be a pretty easy connection. And I won't do this in this, uh, so this is for part one. In part two, I'm going to actually hook it up to my QL here. I'm just going to give you a little bit of um, the basics of this cool uh, typewriter, electronic uh, EP. I think it stands for electronic printer. Um, and Commodore 64 VIC-20 uh, shows you kind of how you hook it to, to that. And again, here you just use uh, 75 baud's uh, to the transmit line and ground. There's not even a DTR that tells you the signal is ready. TI 994A. So this was really made for those computers. Um, HX Epson. Don't know what that is. The it seems like uh, PC 82 NEC. Uh, the one that I used for the um, I think I used uh, this for the um, IBM ThinkPad because you can see the note right here says. IBM ThinkPad was 300 baud's, uh, 8 bits, one stop hardware flow, and then yeah, all three connections done. And uh, yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, now for the QL, um, I can do 300 baud. It can also hook to a pocket computer PC 1500, which was I had the uh, um, pocket computer one. So yeah, all sorts of cool uh, things you could connect it to, but yeah, let me uh, let me actually let's see if I can actually. Um, so um, I'll, I'll showcase the um, the Quill editor uh, in part two. Uh, so let me actually just change the camera angle a little there bit. There you go, nice and zoomed in. And so yeah, um, so let me turn this on. Uh, I should put. So I'll demo it uh, next week. Uh, uh, with the thermal paper, but for now I'll, I'll just uh, put this cartridge back in. Uh, I won't do much because I don't necessarily want to waste paper, but I'll, I'll put um, a sheet of paper in. And so, just like a typewriter, you kind of open this up. Actually, this was already open. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it, it was open. <laughs> and so now you can kind of push this paper in. There we go. That, that's you. So this is definitely old school, not like what we used to nowadays, where we can just kind of feed in the uh, paper in a tray and it all takes care of itself. Close that up. Close that. So now that puts the roller, pinches the roller, so this is no longer loose. When you unpinch this, you have a chance to kind of straighten out the the paper a little bit. But when you then close it, now you can't, and then you also put this to. Uh, put the print head to the printer. So now if I go and turn this on, you can see that, uh, let's see what the, so it, it gives you the ability to, you know, you can see that it lets you 
uh, change the contrast on the uh, LCD screen. So if I'm in normal mode, now if I start typing H E L L O, and I probably so now it hasn't typed anything yet here. I can uh, I can actually delete this. So oh. Yeah, well, I can edit here, and I can just type in a capital H, and then move the cursor. Uh, how is it? So that was the idea, is, and this is especially with the EP20, is that you could type on it, and let's see, how's the contrast? I can, it's different for me than it is for the camera, so I want to make sure that that's pretty good. So that basically, as you're typing, uh, you could make corrections, but as soon as you go beyond that, how is it, as soon as I type G, it hasn't done anything yet. Okay, let me clear this. Um, so I think it's a no print. So this is direct print. Right, so let me try that again. Uh, H, yep. So that means the H has already been typed. Uh, e, L, L, O. And so hello has been typed. Now if I put it in CP, um, what happens is H, O, W, A, R, E, Y, O U comma. So now I printed the space. All it prints the H is good. And uh, I can just, and that'll just print the rest of it. And you can see that uh, we can move up to, you can see hello, uh, there's two spaces here. How are you? All is good has been uh, printed to the to the screen and uh, yeah so so you have the the, um, the different uh, print mode so again normal is treat this like a typewriter where you can do um, uh, direct print no print and I forget what's uh, correction correction print that's what CP stands for and so that means you can have a choice to a chance to uh, correct that this is line spacing. Um, so if you do no print, I think you can put it in store. And if you so, this is how this works. If you put it in store, then what you type up to two thousand bytes are stored in memory. And if you put it in corrective print, this will still do A B C. So now I'm storing all this in memory, but it's still printing. So in other words, you can use your paper to, um, let me see if you can get enough to see the paper. You can use your paper kind of as the monitor to see what you're doing, but what you're typing then gets actually stored in memory so that you could then repeat it. So if you did a cover letter, for instance, you could um, maybe type in the address and then uh, once you've finished typing the address, you could then uh, print the cover letter by taking what's in stored memory and printing it. Um, how you do that, I've never actually used that feature, but um, how you do that is, yeah, so code in, new text, there we go. So now I can start, yes, new text, uh, and so now I can start typing. Oops. Uh, capital H, H E. L L O how are you today? So question mark. There we go. And so when I'm done, stop uh key code S. Oh, I see. So this is basically Yeah, so I stopped. 
is displayed in this way. A DP motor is not displayed. The stop cord is not printed. Okay. So then, uh, uh, deletion of the last line, automatic paging and memory, stop and continues printing from memory. Right, so now I should be able to uh, hit return. And it prints that. And so now I should be able to say code P, print text. And it does it again. Look at that. All right. So again, I don't want to, um, and I can... Uh, so you can see that it allows you to um, to print, and then it'll. Um, yeah, I don't know what this extra stuff here is. Oh, question mark. Uh, it allows you to print, and then allows you to reprint it if if you want. Um, hopefully, you can see what I'm doing. So it's, I'm I'm trying to make sure that I'm focused in, um, but uh, so that maybe I think this is good. This camera just a little bit more. There we go. Um, and uh, so yeah, so you can do memory printing. And what I want to do, um, so so again, this is a pretty cool uh, little typewriter that I used back in college. And once you use it for a while, you become pretty comfortable with it. I'll put it, like I said, I'll put a link in the description to to find a, a the YouTuber that actually did a nice breakdown of the EP20. The, the one additional thing this has is there's literally, um, uh, let's see if, you, if I can move it sideways, but there's literally, uh, you can see there is a 25-pin a, a port here. And so for part two, what I want to do is I actually want to connect this to my QL and treat it as a printer, which is the other cool thing. And then you basically just set it to this. Um, you can see that uh, you can set the baud rate and whatnot. By the way, these things, this also acts as a calculator. So if you do a no print, clear things out, you can do, or I guess you got to do a normal, clear things out. You can do stuff like three times five equals 15. So it acts like a little calculator. I don't know why that's necessary, but they probably just have the functionality to add into it. So next time, uh, for part two of this, I will, um, uh, work on hooking this into my QL. I'll demo the QL word processor and uh, build a cable for this. And uh, I will also use thermal printer uh, paper so that I don't waste the cartridge, which I'm already doing a bit more than I want to on these because uh, hopefully I am... Yeah, so luckily, if, if you look at uh, what I've done, you can see that... Maybe I can get even closer. There, uh, I'm just going over previous tape, so so I actually haven't. Uh, so if I go and move this tape up ever so slightly, you can kind of see that. Oh, here we go. That I I I. So I had, I had already uh, used. So, so I'm not wasting new, new un, um, unused tape. I think I've rewound this at one point. In fact, you can see that uh, there's tape on here. So I think I've played with that as, before as well. So again, these, cart these cartridges are precious. And one thing I'm going to look into is you can still find this wax coated ribbon. If I can, re if I can refresh this, then I can use this on real paper as opposed to the, the thermal paper is okay. The only problem with thermal paper is that it's um, it tends to be uh, it tends to be thinner and flimsier, and so it's and, and, and waxier, and so it's not quite as good as uh, regular paper. So I will probably uh, an, a future project is to see if I can't find a um, uh, find a way to uh, um, replenish this wax paper so that, uh, I mean, right now all I've been doing is rewinding it after use, but I'm going to try to replenish this wax paper to see if I can't come up with, uh, um, uh, you know, using the old case, uh, sorry, you, you, uh, can I focus in on this? That's really hard. Here we go. So that I can, uh, uh replenish these, uh, um, cartridges because they're, I think they're, they're, yeah, they're like 10, uh, is it three for thirty-four dollars, something like that? So they're they're pretty expensive and rare to find, and so I have two brand new ones in this one that I'm using for testing, but I don't want to do too much of it, and that's why I bought the um, 
their own paper. Okay, um, so I'll, I'll end there. Like I said, this is a pretty cool uh, little typewriter, and uh, I'm going to show you how to, uh, next time how I'm going to use it as a, as a printer. So uh, thanks for joining me today, and um, stay safe.